This is a quick video over the electro, electro tonic potential. So what exactly is the electrotonic potential? At, well, basically, let's say we can open up this channel. So if we were to open up this channel, ions, some sodium ions would start flowing through. And these, they would be positive, and so we'd have, it would become positive over here. And this would become negative over here. And these positive charges would start pushing on these other positively charged ions. So then they would start pushing on these, and then this, and then this. And this, is, this happens instantaneously. So the moment this opens, this potassium ion all the way down here feels it. It's instantaneous very quickly but it doesn't feel it very strongly it's it's relatively weak so this becomes positive and this becomes positive but it's pushing out on these potassium ions where these potassium ions are wanting to go that way remember it's sodium ions coming in but these sodium ions aren't traveling down the entire axon they're just pushing on the next ion next to them and then and that ion is pushing on the next one next to it so this potassium could be pushing on the sodium and on and on so, what actually happens if we could read the voltage across the membrane? Read the voltage across the membrane. We're going to say we can read the voltage from here to here. We're going to call this 1. We're going to do the same a little bit farther away. Call this 2. And a little bit farther down, here and here, we're going to call this 3. And then all the way at the very end, we're going to call this 4. 4. That was 3. So if we were to actually graph this, or, well, we'll graph it in a second. So let's just, let's say the sodium channel has been going for about 2 milliseconds. What's the voltage? So in this area, it's probably a, a positive 20 millivolts. Down here it would actually be probably a negative 10 millivolts. And down here it might be a negative 30 millivolts or probably actually be a negative 40 millivolts. And then all the way down here this one might be a negative 65 millivolts. So the farther you are away from it the faster it drops off. So let's just graph that real quick. Or, is that, or actually, why is it actually losing its voltage as it goes down the down the uh, the axon? Well, it's because there are potassium ion channels. Potassium ion channels. So this potassium is getting a push, so it's actually going to get pushed out that way. So it's going to take this positive charge and take it out here. So it's going to decrease the voltage. And the same thing's going to happen. More potassium are going to leave this way. Only potassium. And potassium are going to leave. So this is going to lose more voltage. And the further you go out, there's more of these potassium channels. And they're just going out because they're getting pushed up. Because, I mean, again, they're being pushed this way. So they're just going to go out that channel. And it's going to happen down here, too, because it still has these sodium channels just all over the place. They're going to be pushed out that way. So it's going to fall even more. And it's, I mean, it's also going to happen down here. They're going to fall down that way. So that's why the voltage is dropping. Is because these so our potassium ions are falling out, decreasing the the posit how positive the inside of the axon is as they leave the leave the axon to go to the outside. So if we were to graph it, where this is the voltage and this is time, maybe negative 70 millivolts right here, and this is time. Or this is the opening of the channel. Opening. And this is where we were reading it. So that was like the two milliseconds. So the first one, nothing happened. It was, it was staying at a negative 70 millivolts until the channel opened. And then all of a sudden, it just climbed. And this the second one did the same thing. Nothing happened. But it didn't climb as much. It still climbed but it didn't climb as much. And the third one, which I believe was purple, purplish, 
it did the same thing. Nothing happened until it opened. And remember, uh, the electrotonic potential occurs immediately. And the last one, it barely felt anything, but it did feel something. So it was doing nothing until it opened. And then it barely, barely felt something. Barely felt something. So how could we improve the axon so that more of the charge or we have more of the charge will go down it. Well, what we can do is try to get rid of these, rid of these uh, sodium channels or potassium channels. So what can we do to get rid of them? Well, what the cell does is it wraps itself around with additional uh, membranes. So it wraps itself with additional membranes. So these membranes are really thick, and these potassium channels can't cross them. They can't go like that. That's just too thick. They can only cross one membrane. And there are three membranes here. So we no longer have these potassium channels allowing potassium to exit or the charge to exit. So now, so we'll erase these voltages real quick. That one's not allowing anything to cross. So now we still have this positive charge going, being pumped in due to, or not pumped in, but because of the, the sodiums coming in, making this area positive. So this just keeps coming positive, and none of them, none of the potassium ions are allowed to leave to make this area negative. I mean, the voltage is still going to drop because they, they're pushing on each other, and there's a bit of a drag. So the voltage is, the uh, positive ions aren't going to be able to all go straight across. They're again, they're going to be pushed on each other, and they're not going to leave anymore, and that's the important thing. They're not leaving. So we added that membrane. So this one might be at a positive uh, 25 millivolts. This one might be at a positive 10 millivolts. Positive 10 millivolts. This one a little farther might be at a negative 10 millivolts. And this one all the way down here might be at a negative, a negative 40 or negative 30 millivolts. And if it's at a negative 30 millivolts, that means this sodium channel can open. So then it can replenish the drop in the charge. So this starts becoming positive again. And if we repeated the cycle where we had another part of this axon, just if you can imagine this axon going on like that again, it would, it would allow for the signal to be amplified and move on. So this, when this sodium channel is activated, this is the action potential. So we saw when you insulated it, it kept the charge in. None of the ions could leave the charge, so pretty much when these moved, these had to move about the same. I mean, there's some part where they're, where they're getting a little bit, there's a bit of a drag in there, so it's, whole, it's preventing them from uh, keeping their maybe 25 millivolts. But, I mean, that's still, it's enough to cause this channel, to, this channel to open, and once this channel opens, it causes an action potential that then allows these positive ions to go again down the channel or down the axon. So if we were to redraw it, we would actually see that most of these they wouldn't look like this anymore. They would look something like that that and maybe that. So it, it helped when you add a membrane it, it uh, insulates it where the charge can't exit anymore. So that's the really important thing. When you insulate the axon it increases the uh, resistance to ions traveling out and more importantly it prevents these uh, channels from being able to be right here. No channels can be right there just due to their thickness. So that is the electrotonic potential in a nutshell and how insulation helps uh, uh, increase the distance it can travel.